Matthew chapter 24. And uh, I'm going to read verse 3, and verse 4, and verse 10. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, verse 4, and verse 10. The Bible says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 10. Then And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Father, we thank you tonight, God, for the presence of your spirit, your presence that we feel here tonight. I pray that, God, for the next few moments, God, you would pull the rain upon every heart, every mind. I, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over this service, God. Speak unto us. I pray that God give us an ear to hear what the spirit would say. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I also want to direct your attention to the book of Luke chapter 17. If you were here last Wednesday, you know that we, we focus some of our attention to Matthew chapter 24, and uh, particularly verse number 4. Amen. Where Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, no man deceive you. And uh, last week our lesson was on be not deceived. And so I, I want to direct some uh, of our attention to verse 10, though. Before we look at Luke 17, I want to read Luke, excuse me, Matthew 24, verse 10 again. It says, In Matthew 24, verse 10, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verse 1 and 4. Luke chapter 17, verse 1, the Bible says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that in millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, and that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Somebody say, forgive him. Forgive him. Verse four, and if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day turn again to thee saying I repent thou shalt forgive him amen James chapter 4 James chapter 4 and verse 7 a familiar verse to most of us James chapter 4 verse 7 the Bible tells us Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. There's something that has been in my spirit that I know the Lord wants me to speak on tonight. And my subject tonight, my lesson is simply resist the temptation to be offended. Resist the temptation to be offended. Now, we read in Luke 17, 1, Jesus says, Woe unto him through whom offenses now, one way of looking at what Jesus is saying here, when you look at the context of that chapter and a few of the verses there in Luke 17, another way of looking at this is that God will deal, particularly when you look at the scripture that says, woe unto him through whom off 
expenses come. In other words, God will deal with the offender. God will deal with the offender, not us. Somebody say, not me. Not me. But God will deal with the offender. But I think it's important too also to note that we need to not be offended. And we need to also be in a position that we're not doing the offending. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's easy to offend people. Right. Amen. 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 It's very easy to offend people. We need to be very careful in what we say and how we say it and what we do. That we don't offend people. Amen. Sometimes you could do things unaware and what you may do may offend someone. Right. Amen. Amen. But I don't believe that any of us intentionally, amen, wake up trying to figure out what we can do to intentionally offend someone. Amen. But now there are people that have that kind of mindset. That is in their DNA. It is in their makeup. That they wake up with the mindset, what can I do to offend someone? Now, let, let, let me ask you a question. What is an offense? Now, the word offense in the text that we read in Luke chapter 17, verse 1. This word offense, it comes from the Greek word scandalon. And this particular word offense that is in the Greek scandalon, it is where we get the word scandal. Amen. This word scandalon in the Greek originally it signified the trigger of a trap. It described in the original Greek a, 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 a trap stick or a small piece of wood or bait that was used to keep the door of an animal trap propped open. And this uh, trap stick or this small piece of wood was placed inside the trap to lure the animal inside. And when the animal was to enter into the trap, the animal would accidentally bump the trap stick or the small piece of wood and causing the door to slam shut, causing the animal to be trapped inside with no way of escape. And so here in Luke 17, verse 1, Jesus uses this word offense, or as I refer to in the Greek, scandalon. He uses this word to help us understand that there will be things that will happen in your life that will have the potential to trip you up. There will be things that can happen in all of our life that has the potential to throw you off. Amen. Amen. Some of us have had things happen in our life that, that, that if it had not been for the Lord, you, you were tripped up, you were sidetracked, you were tripped up and off course confused, but God made a way. Amen. And yes, Satan will tempt us, all of us. Amen. I, I, again, I will say Satan will tempt all of us with moments of offense, with the purpose of luring you and me into a trap. Because he knows that if he can lure you into the trap, he knows you will become offended and entrapped because of the offense. Just like an animal that's trapped in a cage and cannot get out, we too will find ourselves suddenly caught in a miserable situation. Trapped in a detrimental situation full of negative feelings and emotions. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
That's why sometimes you got to resist the temptation to be offended. I want you to know tonight that, you know, there will be offenses. Everybody say, there will be offenses. Uh, I think I need to say that again. There will be offenses. Amen. According to Matthew 18, 17, Jesus said, for it must needs be that offenses come. You see, it's important to know that there will be offenses that will come to hurt you. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you could be celebrating after the night service, rejoicing. Uh, I mean, you, you could be happy to be in church. Anybody happy to be in church? Amen. Amen. I, I mean, you could be happy, you saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, glad that God called you, glad he saved you, glad he filled you. I mean, you glad you are part of the household uh, of God. You, you, you're part of the body of Christ and you're happy about that. I, I mean, you can be so happy at times in your life that you, you boasting on how things are so positively different in your life now and, and how great things are in the church. But Jesus predicted that one day you will be struck in such a way with an offense that can cause you to have a lot of pain. Amen. There will be offenses that will come that can hurt you. And the pain that comes with the offense can be emotional pain. Pain that, that you feel in your heart. Pain that you feel in your mind. I'm talking about the hurt that, that you find that, that sometimes is, is difficult to get rid of. You, you see, we, we got to understand Jesus said these are going to be some of the signs that will indicate we're in the last days. People are going to be amazed and many are going to be offended. Amen. And then if we know that Jesus said this, we need to understand there are going to be times you have to resist the temptation. To be offended. Amen. 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 I mean, sometimes that pain is so real that, that, it, that, it, that it affects your life. And sometimes offense can affect you for a, a lifetime. Amen. Based on how you respond to it. Amen. It's important that we learn how to respond to the temptations of offense. Somebody said there will come offenses. Amen. There will be offenses that will come in your life. That will come to anger you. Amen. I'm telling you, you be happy. You say happy. You in church. You can be loving your brothers and sisters. Enjoying your, your personal family. Enjoying the family of God. I mean, you just, you, you, you ever in that place where you just feel excited all the time? Excited about what God's doing Excited about all these people you, You've been witnessing to come to church Excited about people getting baptized in Jesus name You're Excited about checks in the mail You're excited about bills being paid off I mean you just You, you know you just up there You're just excited about what God's doing But Jesus predicted According to the scripture That one day Something can happen in your life Something will happen in your life that's going to irritate you. Amen. Amen. Well, I had some stuff there that irritated me <laughs> to the utmost. <laughs> I mean, it's, it just it just it's irritated me on the job. I mean, at times I can hear my voice in my head just wanting to just say certain things. Not not bad things, maybe it would have been to the degree, I mean, it, it was, it, you, see, you know, on my job, they, they got ping pong tables. <laughs> and I'm okay, because, you know, they want to get balance, and I mean, they, these people just playing ping pong all 
day long. <laughs> and the ping pong table by my desk. And I, I mean, I got to a point, I mean, I just wanted to say, will y'all put those ping pong table balls down? It was irritating me. Yeah. There's stuff, you know, you, you, I, I know y'all so say that you don't be irritated by stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was irritating me. Especially when I'm trying to work. And I'm trying to work, and I'm thinking, what they doing? <laughs> I'm trying to work, and, every, and it was like certain people, it was like, you know, 30 minutes they come and play, and then the next, next another 30 minutes they would come play. I mean, I saw one person come and play ping pong about four times. <laughs> and then sometimes you could, they would get intense, and I mean, like, it was at the Wilmington. Wilmington. I mean, they mm, mm, mm. I mean, they were, I mean, it was playing ping pong to such a degree, the ball, when they would hit it, come over by my cube and just pick it up and pick it back over to me. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you, I was getting irritated. Yeah. Amen. There will be stuff that will happen in your life that will irritate you. But you got to resist the temptation to be offended. Amen. I mean, there, there gonna be stuff that's gonna happen in your life that will annoy you. Some, some of you just get annoyed by how certain people say certain things. Yeah, there's some people that just annoyed by how a person walk. There, there's certain people like that, and I know that's none of you. I mean, certain people just annoyed by the tone of a person's voice. I know I'm talking to you. <laughs> you just know it. I mean, stuff happens that, 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 that will make you angry. Again, there are offenses that come to angry. There are offenses that will come to uh, produce resentment and hatred in your life. There are events in life that can cause great displeasure. Amen. Amen. To the point you, you become so agitated, tumultuous. Amen. That, that if you're not careful, it, it can cause intense hatred in you. Amen. Uh, that, that's what offense will do. It can come to produce hatred in you. Amen. I'm just talking about some of the things that can come and happen in our life. There, there will be offenses that will come and that will be difficult for you and I to even forgive. Or forget. Amen. I'm strong and I'm resilient. I assure you, you can be strong. You can be resilient. But there is going to be something that can happen that can cause you to be in a position where it's, it's, it's hard for you to forgive. And if in the Bible it tells us if we don't forgive, God is not going to forgive us. Yeah. Amen. 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 See, what, what, we, what we see in these verses and what Jesus is helping us understand is, is that it's impossible to come into this world and never be offended. Right. It's impossible to come into this world and not be offended. It's impossible to come in this world and never have an experience that, that you don't find difficult to forget. Have you ever been in a situation where you have found yourself in a situation where it has been difficult for you to forgive? Yeah. And in all actuality, it is really a trap. Let me say something here real quickly. You need to understand that that offense will stop the blessings of God from flowing. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I don't want God's blessings to stop flowing in my life. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And so that there are offenses that will come. That will bring problems in your life. And I, I'm, I'm of the persuasion. I believe that a lot of the problems that, that we see happening in the world today have come as a result from people offended. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, people are angered and bitter from experiences that they've had in their life. Yeah. 
I, I mean, people, I mean, we, we've all maybe had some bad experiences. I mean, people have bad experiences on jobs. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're in a place and time and hour where people have bad experiences and they have bad experiences with their own family. Right. Right. Amen. You, 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 you can get offended by what happens on the job. Yeah. Amen. And I, I notice every time stuff happens on my, it's always on them days we fasting. <laughs> Food all around. You got to resist that temptation. Amen. We got to resist the temptation. There, there is a temptation to be offended. And sometimes you, you can get offended, like I said, on your job. You can be offended by what happened on the job, the outcome of what happened on the job. You, you can be offended by what people have done to your family. Come on. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I, I mean, you, you can be uh, offended by... Uh, you know, what, what has happened in some of your personal friendship that you've had with people? Amen. Amen. And, and, and if you're not careful, you, you know, the, the enemy will lure you into that trap to get you in it and trap you in it that you cannot get out of it. Right. Amen. Yeah. I, I mean, there, 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 there's all kinds of offenses. And they're, 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 you could be in a church loving God, loving everybody, and all of a sudden something happens. That now you are offended with your brother. Right. Or offended with your sister. Right. Amen. 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 And, and a lot of times offenses, what happens is they bring hurt, they bring pain, and they bring bitterness. Which really is the foundation for, for, for breakaways. Rebellion. Amen. Amen. And, and you know what, what's interesting? Rarely do you find breakaway people or rebellious people or disconnected people who have not been offended. Right. Amen. Amen. See, see what, what I, I want to help you understand is offenses can be a turning point in the wrong direction. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why the enemy allows offenses to come. To turn you and me in the wrong direction. And, and, and let me say something else that I think is important. Is, is that, see, once the devil knows what offends you. Come on, come on. Once he knows what offends you. Mark it down. Mark it down. Once he knows what offends you. See, what, what offends you may not offend me. Right, right, right. What offends me may not offend you. But once he knows what offends you, right. he will continually send that particular thing in your life. Yes. That's right. Hoping to lure you into his trap. Yes. He will constantly keep sending it yes. to, to, to tempt you to fall to the trap. Amen. Amen. Once he knows, he's going to keep sending it. Amen. When he know how, what, what certain things rub you wrong with, he'll keep sending it to you. Amen. Waiting for a vulnerable moment that you might kick the trip stick, fall in the cage, in the trap, to a point you cannot get out. Amen. And, and, and just like a snake that causes people to quickly rise up and kill it. Anytime you see a snake, you need to kill it. And kill it quickly. <laughs> Amen. I don't play with snakes. <laughs> Amen. It's shovel time. <laughs> snake away time. Ain't no time to find no pet. It's time to kill it. <laughs> quickly. And offenses need to be dealt with the same way. Swiftly. Amen. Just like when that snake raises his head, you're ready to kill it. When an offense ri rises quickly, you need to be ready to kill it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And see, the question is not, will you encounter offense? The question is, how will you respond to it? Yes. Do you know your future, my future? Amen. Amen. Somebody say my future. My future. Your future 
will be determined how you respond to offense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joseph's future was contingent on how he responded to his offenses. Yeah, true. Amen. 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 You need to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Your response to offense is going to determine your future. Joseph knew in the pit, I cannot respond the way I want to respond. Because yeah. God has showed me where I'm going. Yeah. See, God will show you where you're going, but the devil will take something, bring something to you to cause you to be offended right. with the hopes that you stay trapped in that situation and never reach where God's trying to take you. That's right. So you better learn to resist the temptation to be offended. Because you got to know, I know where I'm going. I know the hand of God is on my life. God saved me for a purpose. And I'm not going to let what this person do and this person do cause me to be so offended that I cannot reach the destiny of what God trying to take me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Your response to it yes. is going to determine your future. Amen. And I want to share some things with you that I, I, I feel that I, I, I have learned in life. You know, you know, when you spend 14 years in the military, you, you, you learn, you adapt, you work with people from all kinds of walks of life, people from all around the world. You know, and then when I, I take 14 years of military and I, I begin to ponder, you know, 23 years of working in corporate America, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of different people. I've been a, around a lot of different people. I've, I have to have lived with a lot of different people in the military. And, and, and something I, I feel that I wanna share with you, I, I feel that there are several reasons why people get easily offended. There, there's several reasons why you, you, know, you, you can easily be offended. One of the reasons is oversensitivity. Right. You can be oversensitive. Amen. So, see, people who are overly sensitive are easily offended. Yes, and, and, and because of it, it, it makes everybody else around them, everybody near them feel like they got to walk on eggshells. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Another reason why people are so easily offended is insensitivity. Yeah. The, the next reason people become easily offended is exactly the opposite of the first reason. Because they are too insensitive. These people say and do anything without thinking. They just open their mouth and say anything. Don't think before they speak. Therefore, they leave wounded people scattered along the way. Because they're so insensitive, they just open their mouth and say whatever, whenever, however they want to say it. And it, what, what it does is it leads to rejection and offense. Amen. Another reason people are easily offended is because of unforgiveness. Being unwilling to forgive will make a person easily offended. Amen. That, that person, what happens is they cling to offense. Another reason people are easily offended is because of rebellion. Someone with a spirit of rebellion, the person who refuses to submit to any form of biblical correction or authority are people who are easily succumb to offense. Yes. People who are rebellious, they are easily offended. Yes. Amen. 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 Another reason why people are easily offended is a critical spirit. Amen. I've been around people. Just this anything you show them, they're critical of it. Show them my apple tree, they're critical of it. <laughs> there are some people in life that need deliverance from a critical spirit. And when you got a critical spirit, when a person has a critical spirit, you, you, you become easily offended. Because you find fault in everything. You, you find fault in everyone and everything. 
Therefore, it, it, it causes you to be easily offended. God deliver us yes. from critical spirits. Yes. Amen. Yes. Another reason people become easily offended is because they feel God is unfair. I've met many people who feel God is unfair. Yeah, right. yeah. They, they, they are to a place where they dislike his plans and they feel that he's unfair in everything he has done in their life. Right. So therefore they get easily offended. Mm -hmm. Amen. But well, I'm going to tell you something. Absolutely no man or devil, no man or devil can get you out of the will of God. No man or devil can get me out of the will of God. God alone holds my destiny. That's right. That's right. You see, we, we get to thinking, they got me out of my weed, the destiny for my life. No, 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 no. They ain't a devil of a person. No, that's right. They can get you out of your destiny in God. Yeah. God holds your destiny. That's yes. right. Amen. 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 But only you that's right. can dwarf the will of God for your own life. Yes. That's right. By being offended. Amen. Amen. I, I don't want to dwarf the will of God to my life. Because I'm falling into the temptation of always being offended. Right. You know, one of the things the devil loves to do when he sees revival and souls being saved, the church growing, when he sees people get unified, everybody on one mind and one accord, everybody buying into the vision of God, the devil loves to sin offense. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Things start blossoming. I mean, things start growing. And that, I mean, just a, there's a blossom of revival in your home, your family. Yeah. The devil don't like that. Right. What does he do? He don't do nothing new. Because right. he don't have no new strategies. <laughs> That's right. He uses the same old tactics yeah. to prevent people from producing fruit. Yes. God wants fruit from our life. Amen. But we cannot produce fruit when we offend it all the time. Yeah, right. Amen. Right. Amen. You, 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 I cannot walk in the spirit all the time if I'm offended all the time. That's right. I don't care how much I talk in tongues. Right. Right. That's true. You can talk in tongues and still stay offended all the time. That's true. It's how you say because I've known people in, in the 14 years I've been in the military and 23 years I've been in corporate America. I've been in the church over 30 years. I've seen people that have talked in tongues and stay offended all the time. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I've known people that, and that means I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking in tongues, so I don't need no interpretation. I have known people that have talked in tongues and stay offended all the time. It, it's impossible to walk in the spirit and be offended all the time. It's impossible to be used by God the way he wants to use you if you stay offended all the time. Yeah, yes, it's, it's counterproductive. Yes. And the enemy will send offense our way. Yes, sir. But what are we going to do? Resist it. That's right. That's right. Resist the devil uh -huh. and he will flee. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 Whether you realize it or not, hurt and offense are designed specifically to prevent the Spirit of God from moving and bringing blessings in our life. I, I said it again. I said it earlier. I said again. Offense stops the blessings of God. Notice Joseph, the blessings never stopped. Because he never held an offense against the people who done him wrong. That's right. You don't see where the, now, and from, from a natural perspective, you'd have thought maybe the blessings were stopping, but God wasn't stopping the blessings. Amen. Amen. The Lord's speaking to us tonight. Amen. It is easy to be offended. Amen. Amen. But I love Psalms 119, verse 165. And I'm not going to be much longer. Psalms 119, verse 165. The Bible says, Psalms 119, verse 165. Great peace.
have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. I believe that truly that, that we can live a life where we can live with great peace. I believe it's the will of God that we can have a place in where we, we, we can walk and have great peace. Not to say we won't have challenges and difficulties, but I'm talking about there can be a great peace in your life. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the kind of peace. That, 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 let me give you an example. The kind of peace that you can have that, that when you are face to face with someone who has hurt you, you can remain calm and peaceful. Instead of going ballistic, mm -hmm. great peace. Yeah. I'm not when you come face to face with somebody done you wrong. Joseph came face to face with people who done him wrong. Yeah. Right. But there was a great peace yeah. that Joseph didn't get ballistic and say, "Yeah, it's payday time now." <laughs> you, you know, he thank God he wasn't operating like how we operate. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got you now. <laughs> Yeah, I did not forget. <laughs> but Joseph would have not gotten to the place where he had arrived. Yeah, true. That if he would have held on to all them little offenses. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Peace. Don't the kind of peace, rest, and joy that God can make available to us. Regardless of what has happened in our life. Remember, you, 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 let me just say this in closing. You cannot change what happened in your past. That's right. wow. You can't change it. But I think we need to realize, though, the effect of offense and how it will affect you. Spiritually. Emotionally. And physically. Offense will affect you if you bite the bait. It can get to a point where it affects you spiritually, emotionally, and physically. That's why I say tonight, resist this temptation to be offended. We're going to all have moments. We're going to have to decide how am I going to respond to this. I want you to lift your hand right now for the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we've got to resist the temptation to be offended. Overcome more than a conqueror. I am a winner. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I have dominion and I walk in authority. I've been washed in the blood. I'm kept by his love. I'm filled with the spirit and by his stripes. I'm healed and I'm free. Yes, Jesus gave me the victory. Overcome more than a conqueror. I'm a winner. The joy of the Lord is my Love